Yankee and I'm going to show you how I like to set up. I've been painting for quite a few years, uh, probably close to 30-40 years, and I've set up the same way all the time. That way, even if it was dark practically, I could, could reach out and find what I'm looking for. Um, I'm right-handed, so everything that I'm going to set up is going to be on my right-hand side. First of all, I like to put down a towel, an old towel, and as you can see, this one's been used plenty of times. I put it down so that I'm not always making a mess on, the, on my tabletop, and if I need to wipe a little paint or I have a few spills, this is here. Now over to my right, I like my water dishes. This is the water dish I like. I'm not sure if you can see inside this or not. It does have a space to lay your brushes in and it's got a place to put them up along here. What I really like is this little grid work right down through there because I can just swish my brush back and forth across that and uh, get most of the paint out. The reason these little slots are in here is so you can lay your brushes in and the bristles won't rest on the bottom of your water dish. You never want to leave your brushes in your water dish with the bristles resting against the bottom or they'll get a bend in them and not do what you want them to do. Now I use two of these. Um, one is uh, I wash most of the paint out and then the second one is my clean water dish so that I get the rest out. Um, so that I can get through pretty much a whole project without having to change my water. The, uh, my dirty one, <clears throat> as you can see, is really grungy. This is my clean one. This actually I bought in the 80s. So yes, they are pretty much close to 40 years old. Still hanging in there, still doing a good job. They might not look pretty anymore, but they're doing a job. Next, I like a paint palette. These are styrofoam plates with a, a fairly high lip on them. So if you're using, I like them with the high lip <clears throat> so that I can, between, um, if I'm stopping painting and I've got paint out and I don't want it to dry out, I'll just take a plate, slide it in a Ziploc bag, close the bag, my paints are going to stay wet in there for quite a long time. Now, if you don't get plates with a nice high side, and the reason I like the high side is so that the top of the Ziploc bag doesn't sit down into your paint and then you've lost most of your paint. If you do have a plate that doesn't have a high side, you can just take two plates and a couple of... Um, I'm not even sure what they're called. You get them at the, at the uh, they're in office supplies. And I'll just clip my two plates together and, um, and then slide it in so that you don't uh, get your bag in your paint. I always keep my paint palette also to my right side so that it, um, being right-handed, I go in my water, I go in my, and I'm not, if I have things spread out to my left, I could go into my water, drip on my artwork, and come across to my palette, and I've made a mess. By having everything on my right hand side, it's all right there. If you're left handed, move it all over to your left hand side, and do, pretty much do the opposite to me. I also like something that's quite absorbent uh, to, for my brushes. And this is um, one of those um, felt pads that really sop up water really well. And I'll lay that down with some paper towel over top of it. And the reason for that is you want something that's absorbent. If it's got a lot of polyester in it, when you lay your brush down to get the water out, it doesn't suck it out and that's what you need. You need something that's going to absorb the water out of your brushes. I usually keep a, a damp um, cloth right close by. Um, also what you might want to keep close by is some q-tips. 
Also, your brushes. This is a carrier for your brushes so that if you're going back and forth to class, you want to make sure that you don't uh, put your brushes in something where the tips of them are pressing against anything. Uh, just like you don't want them to press against and go out of shape in your water dish. You also don't want them to go out of shape in, in your uh, carrier. So I have a carrier here that's just a tube. Um, I put my brushes in. I also have a dowel in there that's taller than any of my brushes. The reason I have that in is when I put this on, I can't push it down onto the tips of my brushes. It'll only go that far. And then when I put it in my basket to bring it back and forth, I make sure it's sitting straight up. Um, you'll notice that I've got red dots on the top of this to also tell me that it is the top and that's the way it goes. Now, just a little piece of advice that I just discovered this morning. I, uh, I had left this in my bag and my supplies and had not opened it when I got home after my last session here. So it's been sitting in there a couple of weeks. So when I opened it up to make sure that all my brushes were in there, I also had mildew in there, um, which is not good for your health. So either keep it open. Now my brother, my brother, my husband went out and uh, drilled me some holes in the top of this so I do have some air uh, circulating into it, but it, it's always best to um, uh, take the top off when you get home and uh, or get some holes drilled in it, but I think that taking the top off is best. So those are your brushes. Always take good care of your brushes. A couple of things that you'll want in your pack is some green painter's tape. This tape isn't quite as sticky as um, regular tape, so it's not going to pull your paint off like regular um, tape will. Your canvases. You can, uh, I like to give them a couple of coats of white paint before I start on them, and I like to give them a light sand in between with a sanding block on the fine side, and then I like to, between coats, I like to use a tack cloth. A tack cloth is um, cheesecloth with sticky stuff in it, and it collects all the dust off your work. Um, once I open a package, I keep it in a, in a little container. It could be a jar, a little, some little container to keep the stickiness in it. So other than that, um, and what materials you need for each individual project, which we will talk about at the beginning of each project, this is your setup. Right-handed to your right, left-handed to your left. And we'll see you at the next project. Thank you.